Hi and welcome, I'm Viola from 3D Render and Beyond. Today I would like to introduce the new shader system for V-Ray 5. If you already use standard materials with version 3.7, then you will feel at home. If instead you are still using advanced materials, then you could feel a little lost. Don't worry though, because I'll explain the new features right away. Let's start with Diffuse. Here you will find the color that can be used as a base for your shader. You can obviously also load textures or procedural shaders, and this is true wherever you will find a texture slot. Next, you will see Opacity. A simple slider to control opacity where black means totally transparent and white totally opaque. Through self-illumination you will be able to create self-illuminating objects. You can also compensate the camera exposure and generate global illumination. Under Reflection, you can add a tint to Reflection. If you want the surface to be more or less shiny, use the glossiness lock. You will also have the option to use the metalness workflow, but it is best to talk about it in another video. Through Fresnel Reflection you can use Index of Refraction. By default it is connected to the refraction channel but you can disconnect from it and set it as you please. Next you will find parameters to control anisotropy, needed to stretch specular highlight on the desired axes. Then we will find Coat Layer. It is a new channel and it is needed to add additional coating to shaders like woods, car paint, etc. Its functioning is very intuitive and the way it works is very similar to an additional reflection channel without having to go through a blend material. It has its own index of reflection and a bump since in real life bump will happen above coating.
From refraction channel, you can control refraction. Let's see how you can create a simple glass. Like always, you will have an index of refraction and control over glossiness. Next, you will have fog color that will give a color to the volume inside refraction. and subsurface scattering to give translucency to the objects. We not only have coat layer as a new entry, but also sheen that is especially useful for creating fabrics and similar shaders. It is extremely easy to use, but nonetheless will enable us to obtain great results with the fabric's typical falloff. From the slider we can control the effect. If we also mix a grunge map to simulate handprints on fabrics like velvets, we will get great results within seconds. Next we find bump. I think everyone knows how the bump channel works, so I won't waste much time on it.
The only thing you have to be careful is that white corresponds to the cavity and black to the extruded parts. If like many, you have inverted maps compared to this standard, there is no problem, you just need to add a minus sign in front of the bump amount. You can obviously also use normal maps that will usually need to be set in tangent space. Under options you can add various ID types to create maps for compositing. You can enable round edges to virtually round corners. You should always use it with caution by using a reasonable radius. Last but not least, you have preview settings for both the shader preview quality but also the editor map size for the resolution in the viewport. This is all for today. I would like to remind you that this is just an intro to start using new shaders, but V-Ray will allow you to create really advanced things. If you like this video, make sure to follow us on social media and to subscribe to our newsletter so that you will always be updated with our new content.